I'd be happy to. But before I do, I have to comment on your intro. You mentioned that we've done 10 franchises with you guys in the last four years. That's embarrassing. We should be doing 10 or 20 franchises a year. Exactly. You know, we've been ranked for the last five years in a row by Entrepreneur Magazine as one of the top franchises. And we're also ranked as one of the top low cost franchises. So there's no reason why we're not doing uh, bigger, better numbers with you guys. So hopefully this podcast will spur some of your uh, candidates, some of the people out there to taking a look at Property Management Inc. and what we're doing and why we're we're, we're uh, growing at the speed that we are. Yeah, no, well said. And as we've expanded, especially working with American investors and not just foreign nationals seeking the E2 investor visa, I think there's going to be a lot of lot more ways to work together. I love it. We we are in such a fun space. You know, property management is something that is known by everyone. It's an industry that's been around for as long as there was housing. And uh, but there's never been a national brand. There's never been a group or a company that just really went out there and made it a national brand. And that is our mission here at Property Management Inc. We want to be a national household name. And uh, we're we're bound and determined to to get there. And uh, we're 13 years old. We're we're doing some great things. I'm happy to share and excited to share with uh, some of the people that are listening to this podcast today, kind of who we are and what we're doing and what our industry is all about. Yeah, I would love that. For those that you know aren't familiar with property management, um, would be great just to have a primer in terms of different property management verticals and, you know, in Florida vacation property management's very big here. You also have long-term residential. So we'd love just to understand more for those listeners and people watching this live stream. Um, what, what is property management and what, what verticals can you plan? Yeah. I love that question because property management is a very general term, uh, but there are lots of different sectors of property management. And one thing that makes Property Management Inc. and our franchise so unique is we're the only property management franchise offering that offers solutions, training and support for our franchisees to venture into four different sectors of property management. When I say sectors, the most common one that most of you probably heard of and seen or maybe done yourself uh, is residential property management. That's the kind of property like a single family home or a multifamily property that people live in. And uh, of course, property managers uh, manage those properties. Did you know that over one third of Americans live in rental properties? And so there's a huge demand for the services of property management. And we consider that and call that residential property management. And our franchise targets that. The majority of our franchisees typically start with that uh, sector. We refer to them as pillar. Uh, and they start with the residential pillar and then expand to some of these others. Another uh, sector of property management is the commercial sector. And uh, that is everything where people work and or do business. It might also be uh, tied into maybe uh, um, parking lots, uh, need management and things like that. So the commercial sector is a big, very lucrative sector of property management. Our franchise also provides training, support, and services for franchisees that want to get into that pillar of property management. The third pillar that I'll mention is the association pillar. Now, you might know this as the homeowner association group. Most uh, communities across the United States right now, uh, the new communities are all requiring HOAs, and some of the older ones are moving to them. And uh, it's, a re it's one of the fastest growing management sectors in our country right now. And it has very little competition. The property managers that are in this space uh, um, uh, uh, don't have a lot of competition to go with. And so this has been one of the fastest growing sectors of our franchise. And then the last uh, pillar, the fourth pillar is our short term rental pillar, better known as most as vacation rental. But don't think of it as vacation because short term rental uh, there's uh, Airbnbs, VRBOs happening in big metro areas. You don't have to be at a ski resort or a beach to be a short-term rental property manager. And so we target the four pillars of property management in our franchise. We allow our franchisees to choose uh, which pillar they want to start with. And if they've got more than one person, sometimes we'll allow them to start with two. But we want them to be proficient in one pillar before they expand to the others. 
Okay, well said. And I personally walk by a big PMI sign here in Miami Beach. I don't know if it's for the condo association or if it's for the short term rentals, but it's good to see your guys market presence down here. We're growing 320 offices now. So it's pretty exciting and we're just getting started. We're far from being that household name goal that I mentioned in starting. And so we're looking for key people that really want to get in and work with us and, and help us reach our goals as we help you reach yours. Yeah, and it's huge that you you guys are the the firm with the most locations and, and very aggressive growth strategy. And I'm sure that helps the branding and people get more familiar uh, whether you're, you're the renter or the landlord um, with working with PMI franchisees. So how, how's the competitive landscape in terms of like, there are other franchisors in the space, there's mom and pops, um, there are, especially in some of these pillars, there are even publicly traded companies that offer property management services. Would love to just hear your opinion and, and comment on the, the landscape. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why we started our franchise is, you know, property management being as old of an industry as it is, there's just no national brands, like I mentioned, and and uh, there, there just isn't the opportunity for people that want to be property managers or get into property management to really uh, get exposed and receive good training. You know, if you want to be a real estate agent, you can join any one of 100 different franchises and receive training at a state and or national level there really wasn't that uh, for property management. And so we felt we could be that brand and provide uh, really significant training, support services, plug our franchisees into all the software and technology that they need to really run a property management business well. You know, one of the biggest problems in our country is that is our, our industry as property managers is dominated by mom and pops. A lot of little guys out there, one or two man shows that have kind of stumbled into property management uh, uh, at some time and they just kind of are, are doing it. And, and these mom and pops, they just don't have the, the efficiencies and the training and the tools to really uh, escalate and scale their businesses is into more of a uh, streamlined, efficient running business. Now, you know, there are some big property managers out there and there's a, there's a lot of them. You get into the bigger areas. There's a lot of big guys, but again, the majority in our industry are these small mom and pops. And so we're, uh, we're interested in conversions. We take a lot of these guys that are doing property management. We call it a conversion sale where we bring them in and escalate their business and their practices and train them and plug them into. What the does that look like? Generally they have how many properties under management? We uh, we've converted people with 500, 700 doors under management. Wow. So it's not just these little guys, you know, the, some of the bigger guys see what we're doing here at PMI and want those efficiencies and, and tools and, and, and programs. So uh, we do some conversions, but we also work with a lot of first timers. In fact, as a new franchisor early on, that's predominantly what we did. You know, we worked with people that just wanted to be uh, property managers and we trained them from the ground up with little to no experience and taught them how to, to do it and to do it well and, and grow their business. And so we're, we're taking this very fragmented mom and pop business and trying to put some structure to it. And we're not trying, we absolutely are putting structure to it and, and really creating something that's significant. Uh, and uh, we feel that we're going to be at that national brand stage here within the next couple of years. Is there an opportunity for your franchisees to have some consolidation in their local markets, like go out and acquire some of these mom and pops? I love that question because we, that's such a big segment for our franchisees. We call it acquisitions. And, uh, you know, there's so many of these small mom and pops out there that uh, there's always opportunities for our franchisees to buy uh, out their competitors or pick up uh, some of these little guys that just want out of the business because they don't have the tools, the training to do it really well. And they're not making that much money because they're just not scaling. Right. And so we, uh, we have a director of acquisitions. That's all he does, Patrick. He just works with our franchisees and helps them, you know, acquire these portfolios that are available. We did over 60 or 70 acquisitions in 2020 during a pandemic year, wow. Wow. we helped our franchisees add to their- How does that work out? Is there additional fee that the franchisees have to pay for, for his expertise or? 
No, our franchise provides that just as part of being the franchise. Of course, there are costs for the acquisition um, and we'll help assess that portfolio and make sure it's a good, good buy. You know, there's a lot of these, these businesses out there that are crappy and they, they're, or they're way, way overpriced. And overpriced uh, it's like before you send, sign the NDA, like the fact it's just like over stipulated and I mean, I'm vetted biz. We have over a thousand six hundred businesses for sale in Florida. Mm-hmm. And I have seen some property management uh, businesses for sale, but sometimes the numbers just don't add up and, I'm, I love you pointing that out because it happens all the time in property management. You know, these property managers might know that an owner that they're working with is pulling a hundred properties in six months and they'll sell it based on the value of their business now. And they may not disclose that. Yeah, I know that, you know, big chunk of this portfolio is leaving. And so we're so seasoned with this and, you know, because we do so many of these acquisitions for our franchisees, that we know to put clawbacks and things like that in the contract to make sure we protect the franchisee and the buyer. We also know how to negotiate some seller financing where we'll get the owner to to even make it easy and less expensive for us uh, to buy those franchise, uh, or not those franchises, but those portfolios. So it's a cool service. I'm glad you brought that up because I probably wouldn't have mentioned that. Yeah. And I think especially with you know, Americans that can get an SBA loan at 5.5%, 15% down, 30% down for those investors that are, are hungry and really want to get up to, you know, six figures plus, it could be a way to, to fast track that. Absolutely. You know, we're going to help our new franchisees grow what we call organic growth. And that's following all of our marketing, our sales and our lead generation tools uh, which you're going to grow. You're going to pick up properties every week, every month off those organic practices. But as you can imagine, it takes some time to build sure. a portfolio when you're growing something organic like that. And so it's nice to plug in a little acquisition here or there. They're not that expensive typically. And like you said, you can use SBA money and other things like that to finance these things. And so what do you see, what do you see like the best time for a, a new franchisee at PMI to start thinking about that? Like this is a year, two years, three years in, like grow organically to a certain amount of doors and then talk no, to you. With our, with our training, uh, it's so, so good that we can have a new franchisee really trained and operating within a couple months. Uh, I definitely wouldn't advise picking up a big portfolio in your first two to three months, but uh, we've helped several franchisees uh, uh, do acquisitions after that three to six month mark. Okay. And then do franchisees of PMI need to have experience in, in real estate, a license? You know, how does that work? Yeah. Uh, depending on which pillar, you know, like with our franchise, because we're, we're, we've got these pillars, I need to answer that differently. Uh, you know, uh, we're the only property management franchise that offers these multi pillars. And so, as you can imagine, uh, association pillar, no real estate license required uh, in most states. Most states to do short term rental property management, no license required. However, if you're going to do commercial or residential property management in most of the states, I believe in 45 states, they require you to have a real estate license to so do for that be like a sales associate license, like basically yep. the basic entry. Yeah. All states offer that training and that licensing. It's typically a 60 to a hundred hour course, depending on what state requirements are. And it, these schools cost around five, 600 bucks. Typically you do the courses all online and you take a state exam and, and get that license. Most of our franchisees that are new to property management, uh, don't come to our, our franchise with a real estate license. So we even help them through that uh, real estate licensing process if necessary. Okay. And then most of your franchisees, are they working full time in the business or could this be a side hustle? We want people that are committed, you know, when, sure. when they sign that franchise agreement, our team is 100% fully committed. We're full time and and we want people that have uh, that same um, desire that, that, that are equally yoked. Um, yes, from time to time, uh, we've got franchisees that come in and start this out as a side business and uh, plan on transitioning out of their current job as soon as possible. And uh, we allow that. However, Patrick, it's tough. You know, you probably know this, 
whenever you treat something like a side hustle or a hobby, you're probably only going to get hobby results. And so because of that, it's really hard. You know, you'd have to have a flexible schedule or really be able to uh, discipline yourself to make sure your PMI business is getting the attention it needs. Cause these are, these are full time. You got to really plan on working hard your first couple of years in the business. We do allow absentee owners. So we have a lot of owners that'll buy and hire a property manager. And sure, then, sure. Uh, they uh, plug that property manager into our training. We're responsible for training and, and providing the support to that property manager and the owners, uh, uh, got a nice property management business that uh, we train and support their employees. So we've got several franchises that are set up like that. Okay. But I imagine you need, you know, a certain number of doors until you can, you know, be uh, a less active owner where maybe this is after three, four or five years and then you could plug in a day-to-day -day manager. Yeah. Isn't that kind of most people's dream is to, you know, start your own business and build it up, get some staff involved, and then have a little bit more flexibility where, you know, you go hit the, the beach and do some kite surfing or something like that. <laughs> exactly. Definitely not the first year, but you get five, <laughs> six, seven years in. That's the idea. I had to so, throw that kite surfing in there, guys, because Patrick's a kite surfer, so I had to had to make him laugh. <laughs> exactly. And my first season, not, not skiing, but hopefully next year, be out in Utah. I'll we'll do some laps. Um, so tell, tell us what's like the general range for someone that wants to get into a PMI franchise, how much should they invest in, including working capital? Well, our franchise fee is $50,000 and uh, that's pretty standard. If you're a veteran, we'll discount that 10%, but uh, unless you've got that veteran card, we're very solid on that franchise fee. It's 10,000 bucks for everyone. If you're an E2 candidate, that we're helping work with immigrations and E2 processes, then that franchise fee is 60,000. But sure. longer process, we've mm -hmm. done yeah, cases 50, before together. 50,000 so bucks gets you all the training, all the, the, the franchise, it gets you a territory. Most of our territories are not exclusive, meaning we'll take a big metro territory and say, hey, look, we could put you know four or five franchises in, uh, in this area. And we'll make sure they're not located on the same street or or you know, literally, you know, on the same block, we want to make sure there's space throughout that city. But uh, I just say that because if, if maybe some of you have seen that there's a PMI in your town, that doesn't mean that that territory sold out. Keep in mind that our franchise is unique, and that a lot of these franchisees are working in uh, one of four pillars, or maybe two of four pillars, and it might be a pillar that your, uh, or it might not be a pillar that you're interested in. And so we've got so the franchisees many friendly. Like, is it kind of like a community? Like, would you have some referrals to each other if someone's just focusing on one pillar? Yeah, that's exactly what happens is, you know, we've got like you're down in Southern Florida. We've got franchisees down there that just want to do vacation rental. And from time to time as property managers, uh, a vacation rental property manager will get long term or residential property management uh, opportunities. And those franchisees, kick those leads and referrals over to our residential pillar franchisees in that area. And so, yeah, absolutely. They work together. A lot of times they'll do co-op advertising and things like that to help build the brand in that area, that location. And uh, so it's a, it's a great opportunity for our franchisees to build the brand in their, in their areas and, and benefit both, uh, both their businesses. We have um, a member from LinkedIn that's asking um, basically a prospective E2 visa investor, those that are not familiar, you can invest generally 100K or more, employ a few Americans, and you can reside legally in the States. Um, just getting clarification on why the franchise fee is more expensive um, for E2 visa investors. Is this related to time required from PMI for the training or what, yeah. what, what's... Exactly that. We There's a degree of participation where we're working with uh, immigration's attorneys with that E2 candidate. We're also working with sometimes immigration, sometimes, um, you know, it, it's just more work for us to work with an E2 uh, candidate. It's also more risky for us to work with an E2. And uh, because of that, we have a $10,000 increased franchise fee. Um, hey, I do want to add, Patrick, that $50,000 franchise fee is not the cost of doing the business uh, because you, you need to plan on at least another twenty, thirty thousand 30000 on top of that to okay. really 
build your business during that first year? You know, we talked about your first couple of years, you got to roll up your sleeves, get to work and build that portfolio base. You know, that's that group of properties that you're managing. Once you've got that portfolio, you can pull off on some of your advertising and marketing. Some of our franchisees, once they hit certain heights, you know, they, they uh, don't want to grow their business anymore. They're happy with the size and the revenues that they're making. Others are just full throttle wanting to make as much money as they can. And so um, we, uh, we require at least about a 70 to $80,000 cash, you know, uh, reserve, making sure you've got enough for the franchise fee and to cover your business expenses, your minimum royalties and advertising expenses that we require. Okay. And we have a question from Jose Angel, which kind of spills into my next one. Um, what is a property manager's job? Like, what are they doing and how, how are they getting money? Who's paying? Great, great question. I'm going to answer that from the residential pillar perspective. Sure. As you can imagine, our franchise with these different pillars, uh, job is very different for an HOA property manager that, as it is to a residential property manager. An HOA property manager only reports to the board and has homeowners within that association that he'll communicate with, but he works for the board. Whereas if you're a residential property manager, you're hired by the owner or that investment property owner and you work for that owner. And then you have, uh, um, you have uh, tenants that are living in those properties and you're managing those assets. So the daily job of a property manager is to make sure you uh, protect that asset for that owner. You're collecting rents, when it's a new property that you just picked up, maybe it doesn't have a tenant in it yet. So we're going to want to do a full credit screening background check on these applicants that apply. You're going to do all the advertising and marketing for that property. Sometimes you're going to prep that property and get it ready for rental. And so you work with various service contractors, um, carpet cleaners and painters to make sure that those jobs are done and done well so the property is ready. Um, typically these owners hire property managers because they just don't want to do those types of uh, jobs themselves. A lot of times these owners are absentee. They don't live anywhere near where that uh, rental property is. And so they hire you as a local property manager to make sure that property is taken care of, the tenant's not trashing it. You, you can do regular inspections. When that tenant moves out, you handle that move out, move in process, and uh, you are able to collect money uh, from that, uh, that property every month. This is how property managers make money is, uh, and one of the coolest things about property management is this isn't transactional revenue. This isn't where you just sell a property and you make your sales commission. Cool thing about property management is this is what we call residual income or residual revenue or recurring. Once you get that contract or that management agreement signed with that owner, uh, you have a contract to manage that property month after month. And as long as you're doing your job, you're probably not going to get fired. In fact, in most cases, that owner is going to give you more properties to manage. And so a property manager, we work hard to get that property under our belt, but we keep it and we keep that as a recurring revenue stream. And the more properties that we add to our portfolio, the more money we make, you know, I know if I made $20,000 this month and I'm going to pick up a couple more doors, I'm going to make $21,000 next month. Whether the economy is good or bad, whether there's a pandemic or not, whether the real estate market's hot or cold, our industry stays very solid. It's probably one of the most consistent industries in our country right now. And uh, that's what I love about property management is the recurring component of it. You can build the business and work hard and ma maintain and manage that. So making that monthly uh, management fee is only one of over 50 different revenue streams that we instruct our franchisees on how they make revenue from our industry. And this is one of the reasons why people buy our franchise. You know, a typical mom and pop is charging maybe one or two, you know, they'll do management fee. Maybe they'll charge a, a, a new tenant inspection fee, or maybe they'll charge late rent fees, uh, but uh, they don't have the resources and the programs to really make the money that our franchisees do. And so we're making property management, not just easier. We're not streamlining all these processes with technology and the training that we have, but we're making it far more profitable 
That's why this, uh, this franchise works so well is people for the first time are really able to scale these businesses and make them profitable instead of just staying as a small mom and pop shop. And I can imagine like in South Florida, where, where I live in Miami Beach, Florida, um, the owners are not here. They're in South America, they're in New York. So even if they wanted to run, manage the property, who's going to be following up with the tenants and, and plumber, et cetera. So that probably helps, you know, in terms of competitive advantage where it makes the, the working relationship a little stickier. Yep. And what regions are you are you targeting? Um, and I guess what regions are you targeting? And then you know which pillar are you, are you most focused on or most excited about? I should say. Well, yeah, great question. The southern states are typically the hottest for property management because you get a lot of vacation rental stuff down there, as well as a lot of association and residential. But as I mentioned earlier, one third of our country rents their residential property, and so. Um, there is not a bad territory in our country. And in fact, even with 320 franchises open across the United States, PMI has very few sold out territories at this time. Now we're, we're, we're starting to get to the point in a couple areas where we'll probably have some territories starting to sell out over the next year or two. But currently we're opening in almost every city, every town across the United States. And, and so there's not a bad not a bad town to do property management. Some people think they need to be in a big city like Dallas or Atlanta to be uh, a successful property manager. But I can attest some of these smaller franchisees that open in little towns, uh, just because there's little to no competition, those towns are some of our most successful franchisees. Well said, and you know, in light of COVID, you know, how have you guys done? I know you've opened up a lot of locations we curious to hear how the franchisees have fared um, and kind of expectations for the rest of this year as well as 2022. Yeah, COVID scared us all. And uh, I remember back in March and, and April of 2020, having a senior management meeting where we just pulled down all our budgets and we, you know, we were working with all of our franchisees on PPPs and some of these fears that they had. And we kind of turned into kind of defense mode, but we, we didn't know what was going to happen. And what we saw, Patrick, was absolutely a testament of how stable our industry is. Um, with the short term rental pillar aside, because Airbnb shut down for a couple months during, sure. during uh, you know, June or so. With that aside, because our franchisees uh, did take a hit in the short term pillar that were in that pillar, but all other pillars actually grew and uh, did extremely well. We had our best year as a franchise in 2020 that we've ever had for revenue and, and, and growth. We opened 67 new franchises in 2020. Um, that was one of our best years ever. Um, people recognize that property management is a, uh, a necessary business and uh, yeah, the pandemic didn't slow us at all. People have to have a place to live. And, uh, and we saw that happen. So you've talked about, you know, the systems in place, the branding and all the support and how you guys differentiate against different competitors, whether they're, they're national brands or mom and pops. How do you see the, the future needs for property management changing in the coming years, basically this century and, you know, how is PMI adapted? Yeah, the, the mom and pop shops are going to be going away because property management's not like it used to be. In fact, it's not even the same as it was five years ago, let alone 10, 20 years ago. And I'd say the reason for that is technology is really coming into our space and uh, the ability for us to collect rents without people mailing checks for us uh, to have the ability to show properties without having to go to the property. Um, are just two examples of how technology is really changing the way property managers do their business. And these guys that uh, just think property management's not rocket science, why do I need a franchise to do this? They recognize, you know, after they start up property management businesses, this is a lot harder to do than they thought. It's, yeah, maybe they get to like, what, five doors, eight doors, but getting to 100, 150. 
Yeah, it's it's why the industry has so many mom and pops because people don't think, oh, it's it's not that hard. I can do this on my own. And then they realize to really scale the business, to make the money in the business that they need to scale it, they need to have better systems, processes, the technology needs to be in place. And just for the record, I'm talking about a lot more than just property management software. Anyone can go out and get property management software. So when I say technology, I'm talking about a lot more than that. And so uh, that's what we do. We provide this all up front. Our franchisees just slide in, uh, learn these. We plug in all the technologies, the training, make sure the franchisee knows how to grow their business, do the marketing, and then run those properties well. Perfect. One last question from um, from Fahad before we wrap it up. Do you, do you currently have any franchise resale opportunities with PMI anywhere in the U.S.? We've got a couple, you know, uh, not too many, but if you're interested in poss uh, the possibilities of buying a business that already has portfolio, which is pretty cool. Um, yes, we've got a few, a handful of those that are uh, scattered throughout the country that, uh, that we can make you aware of. Perfect. Well, Steve, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on. Um, really appreciate it for anyone that's listening to this live recorded or over a podcast, even for audio. Um, on our website, vettedbiz.com. I'll, I'll add the link. You can go in and uh, the profile on Property Management Incorporated, PMI. You just put in your contact details and a member of Steve's team will get in contact with you pretty promptly, usually within 24 hours. So that'll probably be the next step if you're interested in PMI following this uh, podcast or video, uh, fill out that form and a member of Steve's team will be available and be able to go into different aspects of the brand and what locations are available, et cetera. It's pretty much as easy as that, Patrick. Thanks for uh, the invite. It's been a pleasure. I'm happy to come back anytime and, and, and speak with you. Perfect. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for the time and we'll be in contact.